Psalm 51, and David is confronting his own sinfulness. He says in verse 3, I recognise my shameful deeds, they haunt me day and night. And then he recognises that he is personally accountable for what he has done in his life. He said, against you and you only have I sinned. It's my sin, I have sinned, I, I've done it. And it's strange, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard to believe that the sins that we do are actually our own. We can blame the circumstances. We blame someone who led us astray. We blame uh, Adam or Satan. The devil made me do it. Or we blame our own nature as if it wasn't me who did it. But here David recognises that he is personally accountable. Because you can't shift blame. It's you who've done this thing and the guilt is yours alone. You cannot, I cannot, make any claim to innocence. Paul said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And though obviously we do have um, a genetic transfer from our parents, don't we? Uh, and from our ancestors, we, we have physical attributes that come through the generations. We have mental attributes that come through the generations. But when, when David says, in sin did my mother conceive me, he's not talking about that. He's just saying, I have had a poisoned nature from day one, and I confess it. From his first moments right till the time he wrote that psalm, he just saw sin, sin, and, and more sin. Do you remember those bus tickets? I'm not quite sure whether they still have them, but uh, you'll get the idea. On the bus ticket, it used to say, non-transferable. And that meant that you couldn't take your bus ticket and give it to somebody else. What is yours is yours alone. It cannot be transferred. And your life is yours alone. It cannot be transferred to someone else. And the responsibility for your life and what you've done with it is yours and yours alone. And it's very dangerous to try and look somewhere else and try to shift the blame or shift your guilt and dump it onto someone else. And not only does he recognise that he is personally accountable, but he recognises that what he's done is horrible to God. This is very unfashionable teaching these days, isn't it? In fact, sin is one of those words that has almost been um, taken out of the uh, dictionary. It becomes a kind of church word or a, a kind of religious concept. But it relates to everyday life. It relates to how we live before a generous and a loving Father. And sin really creates a separation. But it's not a separation on God's side. It's a separation on our side. The things that we do are horrible to God. And he cannot tolerate them. It says he is of purer eyes than to behold evil. Listen. To the psalm. I was born a sinner, yet from the moment my mother conceived me. But you, Lord, you desire honesty from the heart so that you can teach me to be wise in my inmost being. I recognize my shameful deeds. Verse 3 They haunt me day and night against you, and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Maybe it's a bit conceptual to think about God in this way, but think about somebody that you love. Think about somebody who is close to you and you have done what is evil in their sight. And some somehow that relationship has broken down. You have damaged the relationship. I was reading about the um, uh, a flower and... If the flower was, the petal of the flower was touched, I think it was a gardenia petal. If a gardenia petal was touched, it retained a brown stain. And that was it. It was marked. And David is talking as if the relationship between him and his father God was like that white petal. And yet what he had done with his own hands had damaged that relationship. 
and now there was a stain upon it and the stain could not be removed. And so he calls out to his father. He says, wash me, scrub me thoroughly from my sin. My sin is ever before me. When I look at you, I don't see the whiteness anymore. I just see that brown stain. It's a horrible concept, isn't it? We'll come back again on another time and think about how the scripture teaches us about restoration. But today, think about how you are, how I am before God, and just realise that his hand is ever stretched open. His heart is ever open. His father heart is available. It is us who've turned away. God bless now.